Hey there, everybody, and welcome. This is Teva Diarcy, servant leader, pastor, overseer of the Body of Christ, uh, CrossBodyUnity.com, DFW Leader Ministry Fellowship, IFFM, the International Fellowship of Foundational Ministries, because we want it to be diverse. We're here today because I love to be like this more than any other place in a quiet, soft, restful, hearing from the Lord, being with another, getting a touch, getting an idea from the Lord. I found that, you know, being by the still waters, the peaceful waters in life, whenever possible, it is where I want to be, where I really want to be. And that means in ministry, the way we deal with people, the way that we want to represent the Lord, His Holy Spirit. You can have a crowd, but you can have an orchestrated crowd. It could be a system. It could be a template. It could be impersonal. It could be rejecting. It could be biased. It could be highfalutin. So we're just trying to pull out of that, and we did pull out of that. God pulled me out of being a dysfunctional in the charismatic movement 2012 when I was in Dallas, Texas, Fort Worth area, in the region, trying to find true organic community and real office respect and a pleasant place not to be famous, not to be celebrity, not to be known, but just to feel welcome, as Paul says, the old-timey Ephesians 1, 1, you know, one and six accepted in the beloved. When you go to be accepted in the beloved, which is a standard historical first church principle, which we need to dust off in some of these groups, main groups, we want to remind people that with the thought of acceptance means everybody, equal opportunity, real respect, the goodness of the Lord's respect for each kind of person, each race of person, each style of person, each gender of person, and whether they look your type, whether they're as fine and righteous as yourself or not, we want to make sure everyone knows the humility, the greeting, the acceptance of the Lord that makes them feel affirmed and feel Jesus. I want to remind you the fruit. Let's give you some fruit for that, some Bible scriptures. Apostle Paul teaches about community and respect and walking it out, endeavoring to do it. That means it'll take some work. Someday it'll be easy. Some will be hard. Sometimes you have to forgive and forget because there's a real big, you know, there's a proud crowd in each of us on certain days. So Paul says to the church as fellowshipping with the saints that would fall under the category of ministry Christian Hebrews 10 25 don't forsake fellowshipping with the saints if some have and listen we reckon we understand why a lot of people the church in America has declined we've been out with this that's why I'm out here researching truth after great trial just for showing up and sitting there and calm polite respectful and diverse, maybe more diverse, James 3.17 fruit, which represents and comes from above, not the dark side, not the evil side, which is, to be honest, assess people by this. Ex assess them, don't accuse them for looking not your type. All right, the, the wisdom from above to gauge people, ministers, and how they treat people also is pure, peaceable, easily entreated full of mercy and good fruit, without partiality, and without hypocrisy. I would say easily entreated is hard to find, harder than ever, in the Western Europeans' ancestors. of certain, It's very difficult now, especially the, really the LP. Then it's harder to find without partiality. <laughs> I've been through black churches. I've never felt targeted, biased. I've never see, felt evil eye. One time... Only once, back in the early 90s, in the day of Virginia, my family and I went to a stadium in Washington, D.C. We went to see Paul McCartney way back when. And the only time I have ever felt targeted by a spirit, a demon of racism in a black person, was when I went past the ticket taker, one person out of all these decades. And I knew, as I walked by with my blonde hair, that glare the spirit you know it was the spirit the spirit looked at me like wow could kill 
And that was my first and only, to be honest, ever experience with that. People who see me that are dark-skinned, brown-skinned, servant leader, down-to-earth, relationship-friendly, they read me, as you want to say these days. You want to, They read me by my spirit. They read me that I'm happy, I'm wholesome, more wholesome than these, and joyful. I'm not racist. African Americans, Hispanics, Christians and not light up Dem Democrats and liberals usually, Hindus, Buddhists, more than this crowd of religious saints. The religious crowd is packing a packing a pistol, pistol ready to fire and target anybody that doesn't measure up to their criteria. Now I'm remembering here it's so peaceful what the opposite <laughs> we're we're teaching dysfunction compared to the restful river. This is the Catawba River in South Carolina. So we're looking at the opposite, packing a pistol, ready to aim their religious demon, ready to project accusation and disrespect, ready to project their politics, their way to, you know, criteria to see if we're good enough to be accepted. These are whelp. And I'm remembered of Jesus Christ, my Savior who went about doing good, not doing that, not bearing that suspicious, dark, supreme fruit, mean fruit. And it says Jesus went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed by the devil. And the Lord was with him, Acts 10, 38. I pictured Christ, who is of Middle Eastern, Sephardic Jew ancestry, tribe of Judah, not legalist. Judah means to praise, to plow. Jesus comes to symbolically plow up our own thoughts and minds about him and who we're going to serve. But I've never read a, any portion of scripture at all about Paul and or Jesus Christ, the Messiah, where he was targeting, witch-watching, vilifying fellow people, much less fellow believers of the church. That was organic. That is organic now. So we got to get rid of this Levitical patriarchism, sin spying, evil eye. It is a detriment to the whole nation, and it has gotten such a big wig. Accusation, so political, that you don't even want to go near there. You're scared to go because you don't know what they're going to do. Jump in public. I've been jumped in public. I've been jumped in public three times in Virginia. 2003 in Virginia, 1996 in Dallas, Texas, really Denton, 2010. And then that doesn't even count the evil eye, the hairy eyeball, the praying against, the withstanding, the all sorts of detrimental accusation, offbeat doctrine in the witch-watching world, the accuser of the brethren and sisterin and motherin and leaderin world. So it's got me on this telling it plain to correct it, to warn it, to advise ministers not to do this, to repent. Because we're for Book of Acts reform. That's all this is. I've never not been sent as a sort of an Elijah ministry, apostolic Elijah. It's an apostle. I've never been sent to anywhere that is not turf protecting. No group that turf protects ever does this. I mean, no group that does not turf protect ever does this. No group that has taken a religious right stand. I'm not saying the evangelicals, I'm never, you know, I'm not saying to accuse anybody, but I'm saying be really careful who your people if they're righteous, self-righteous, accusing people for redemption, you will never woo anybody but your own selves like you're doing now. All right, you will never make it seem so unscary, unbiased, that any liberal, any normal person, any real person, any Democrat, any other kind that has skill will ever want to come in. And I'm with them. I'm out of there. I hang around with more... more <laughs> I hang around with people who are really leery of what I just said. They've been around this, whether they're Christian. There are some really nice, saved Christians, nicer up here than a lot of places, not mean, not strict, not biased, not 
maligning. But then there are also people that I hang with all the time because they, I value people. I respect people who think differently. So I hang out at, you know, Starbucks relationship level. I hang out and have many acquaintances around the area as I have all my life with people who are liberals, Democrats, people who don't believe in Jesus and are curious, but they've been turned off by all this phoniness, dysfunction, religious right. And so I come from a background. I don't know where my side is, but I identify with the freedom to think for yourself. I identify. My daddy grew up in Dallas, Georgia. Now, Dallas, to me, looks, maybe that's where it comes from. Daddy wasn't political. He wasn't right-wing. He wasn't religious right. He voted issues. My whole family voted issues. And I don't remember when saying we were a Republican. No, they just wanted to know who believed, you know, who, um, you know, God would approve of. So I grew up with that framework. Also, you don't go to Christian if you're a Baptist, let's say, you don't become a Baptist automatically like you inherited it. You pray and say, where does God really want you to go? And you just cross any kind of denomination or, or non-denominational. God leads you. And that's how I believe now. If it's a black church with a black pastor and you are white and he sends you and you feel welcome and respected, go for it. If not, go anywhere else. Same with African Americans. And they do usually. But I've never seen such mean, I'll be honest, mean coming about in the last 12 years since showbiz, fame, fan clubs, all this powwow and hifalutin and clubs and systems form the systems. And the big, ambitious, Demas systems that now are not James 3.17. And that's the only place I've really seen people who need to target others for showing up and be biased and withstand and scowl, meaning they have false doctrines. What am I learning? If they're scowling and not smiling, something's wrong somewhere in their doctrines. The scowl a false doctrine, ready to watch you sin, catch you, read your mind, and brainstorm you, divine you, and so occult, so witchcraft. It is just bad. With that being said, I had to grow. It sounds mean to people who've never been through it, but if you have had your life, it's like, let me liken it in scripture. If you have a call for the last days, like an Elijah, and you realize that you trigger. God has sent you out to study his body, surf the body, and giving you the nerve to do it, <laughs> but the peace and quiet. And you're very diverse, knowing that Jesus was not a white man, but he was sent from the Middle East, and he was humble servant. And you go like that thinking, I don't know it all. I don't see it all. I've not done it all. They, nobody else has. They have not either. But you go there sitting there to try to learn and grow. Keep on growing. And you're not thinking of yourself. You're not have no secret spy agenda. You're not demonic targeting, praying against people. And you find out they do toward you. Of course, as a experienced third or fourth, maybe fifth generation of Christian leaders, I was not raised around this. So it sticks out like a red, red flag, deep south needs to repent so then I analyzed it because I thought wow God has sent me to study his body for the last days to build unity I didn't know I'd be correcting I didn't know this existed but when I found it God told me along the way back in the 90s when I started to get into the prophetic movement apostolic prophetic they call themselves many times and they want to be cross-racial but they're really not Instead, they have this LP, I guess, misogyny, fear of man, fear of woman. I don't know what it is. So I started, it got my attention because you can have great music, which I love about it. You can have music and some good teaching and, you know, the move of the spirit, which is really good, can be really good. But if you don't know that there are other levels of the doctrinal bathwaters where they spy, they feel threatened, persecuted, they typecast and you fit their negative old country law hills jezebel which typecast and they don't speak to you to verify that to confirm it because they don't really love you they just are 
us against them that is dysfunctional so when I didn't know this and I found it out slowly but terribly getting you know the accuser mentality the Lord said to me Tevo if I show you something that hurts people normal people everyday people that go to church and it's something that hurts them or my good safe name that is my sign to you as a prophet that I see a lot of it and I want you to train on it that's why I think on it so if I see charismatic playtime diagnosing people so they don't have to speak to them dr. Phil pop psychology oh yeah everybody and they have like 20s and 30s and you've been around far longer with deeper experience and they've learned it you know and I'm not putting down 20s and 30s they're smart as anybody everybody maybe more but I'm saying the experience factor and the depth of people who have been taught it by somebody else in a book and a manual is what I'm saying teaching a fact oh yeah they must be have baggage they all women have baggage all, let's fix them fast instead of relate you know my Bible taught me all the, all these years Jesus had empathy and compassion he didn't make generalities and typecast and he didn't it was his was weep with those who weep mourn with those who mourn no diagnose people you're not dr. Phil you are not a ministry qualified no matter how old you are or young you are you love enough to care to hear their story and take time with them to empathize and I just didn't know all this went down it does so fixing them fast is this class system group let's oh let's diagnose them they're sitting there they don't look you know they don't look our type and maybe they've got maybe they're wounded or maybe they're here to undermine us or take our men or sabotage us because they're hyper paranoid they're really paranoid and you don't know that because you've never been raised around it you know you're mature you're not into evil eye you're not a witchcraft you're a warrior and they can't tell the difference so this is what I found that people are stirred up and immature it's very immature and they're not deep they're weak they're weak and they don't relate because they're not trained to relate they're trained to spy divine read people by their energy which is really Salem witchcraft Salem Massachusetts witch trials use of spectral evidence read your vibe get nightmares impressions but don't relate all right so I looked at this and I thought why <laughs> how do why do I target just this in this one whelp whelm world why nobody else no black people missionary back to snow simply God no unless they have it some of them might but not usually the pastor usually a visiting older man or something I've triggered it but not like this so I think what is this bias against women is it misogyny is it demon is it control is it fear whether did they hate their mothers all of the above did their wives break their hearts their old girlfriend that's what I keep thinking but anyway I wasn't raised around it I'm not an LP neither was any man gentleman in my family so when this went on and the Lord said Tevo you have a call as a prophet to the nation and the nations and I went it, I knew it take time you go through pits and pitfalls and apostolic sifting which it's been 30 40 years which is okay then you have to know who you're sent to as an apostle this is an apostle Paul was sent to the Gentiles Peter was sent to the Jews I said to the Lord in Dallas about 10 years ago Lord if I'm an apostle if this is an apostle call servant leader off scouring apostle call lowercase letters not capital then who is this being sent to Lord because I've always had a human's ministry not a woman's ministry and he said you're sent to the slacks wearers and I laugh because God God tickles my fancy God is a riot he gives me ideas Twitter's the comments things that are really wild and I thought you're right I do have a call to men and women equally and they wear slacks I thought and then I pondered I thought oh and I'm very modern day conscious I don't I, I, I'm very all generations I think young I don't think old at all I think everybody and so the Lord put and then I thought you know why did he say slacks wearers and not all people and then I realized oh the groups 
of Christians, because see, this is geared to the Christian not only, and everybody else could listen and hear God for themselves. All right, so, but the reproving is straight to the born again type. And so when I thought about that, oh yeah, the groups of Christians who believe the Bible, who believe that women do not wear slacks, they only wear dresses, I thought, oh yeah, maybe they already have the fear of the Lord, because that's what's lacking. Oh yeah, they usually do have more fear of the Lord than anywhere else. And I need to, you know, so cool. We're not criticizing, we're admiring that. And I think people can have their own revelation from God that is really a standard he knows about, but we can't receive all of them. So maybe we'll criticize people or look down if they believe in wearing only dresses when maybe he's looking at all of us, but we can't handle it. Maybe I'll say, well, I'm not, I'm, here's mine. Mine would be, I believe in slacks if the Lord tells you if you're modest, you know, decent. But I also say that not many people that are females that are like this, that are not alone because they're alone with God. Not many people have been called to have an apostolic ministry that's a human's ministry and not just a woman's ministry. Oh, as a prototype. Because things are getting desperate. <laughs> I can teach on that, but I'll wait on that later. So the idea is we don't want dysfunction. We want the whole body involved in community collectively collaborating if and when and how the Lord <clears throat> tells us. So as through this call... When I was being sent about the body, I developed some muscle on me. Now, I've always worked out. I've always been trying to be cheery, keep my mind renewed in the Word of God every day, practice the Love Walk Church, remember my daddy, the Heavenly Father, and my daddy, <clears throat> my natural father, who is just like a quiet servant leader, like Jesus going about doing good. No accolades, and that's fine. However, the Lord increased my scope of revelation about this call and he said it's like an it is like an Elijah not the don't say it is the Elijah no it's a lot of us out here all right it's an Elijah anoint, anointing that is for the whole national move of God and what I find and I can teach today because I've stopped that investigation I'm on the new path of just training is that the Lord showed me that when I was getting jumped lied about divined, never spoken to, never confronted, judged as being immoral and in sin time by this one crowd because I stirred up, being accused of being in, unsubmitted <laughs> and a lot of things, a lot of junk. I looked every time because the Lord said, watch them, study who does it, their profile. You know, I knew I was being racially profiled. And I thought, all right, I'll profile them back. And that's how I found all this. But I realized I only have been accosted, defiled, read, scanned, witch-watched, all sorts of mayhem and dysfunction by turf garters. Turf garters with TV-affected ministry, many of celebrity-following kind. Not all, not all. It happens to be those that move in the gifts. So I went, all right, what, is I, what does that mean, Lord? He says, well, you are interested with the Elijah call. The more Elijah call, you're interested in a whole move of God for the nation. You don't need a turf. You don't have to or even want or even need a turf. You just need to be sent by the Spirit. All right. So the Lord said what Elijah found was false prophets that were dominating treacherous trying to destroy him could be a her or him now because they wanted their supreme turf their turf elijah opposed by the false witch watching prophets of the former movement of this day all right elijah they pulled out occult they pulled out occult warfare false prophets targeting him Right? They pulled out King, weak King Ahab, the underminer, treachery, false witness, backbiting, tailbearing, never confronting. That is you, your move. That is the move. Keeping everyone doubting Elijah, keeping everybody saying he's not famous and therefore he's an underminer, a critic, and a complainer, like they do. That's chauvinism as well. Then we have King we have uh, Elijah was married, excuse me, Elijah fought demonic Jezebel warfare. 
Demonic Jezebel was the controlling false teaching who is fueled from the other side, who is Ahab's other half. Against, there, there was a bunch of them, 850 prophets, 450, whatever your translation said, on their side praying and targeting. Then we have weak male Elijah, weak male Ahab, married to the dynamic duo Queen Jezebel, and all of these are against one person, targeting one person on God's move, the one true prophet who only wanted the move of God in the nation, and that has been this person right here. It has, time after time. It's so frustrating, because you really don't even understand all the ramifications till God shows you, and he finally has showing me and showing me now for this future of this nation, if there will be one with these people in charge. If they're going to be a church, a future church, with all this backbiting and animosity and dysfunction and control and self-pitying, witch-watching, oh, poor us, they're out to take our turf. We're being straightforward. I want to teach you, because I had to learn and grow, I didn't come up with my father as the senior pastor and office pastor and many Bible scholars in my family <laughs> and business people. I never knew I had have to know my Bible scriptures because of back under the law, backbiting, and which in name calling, I would have to know all about chain of command, which I do, Adam and Eve, which I do, and Jezebel, demonic Jezebel, and I know about and witchcraft. I've studied it because of charismatics. I've studied it first to say, Am I? When they call me that, Am I? Do I deserve to be on your witch list? And I learned about that too, the hit list. Oh my stars, it's so so childlike so dysfunctional, so toxic for the name of Jesus. It really is. This is not bitter. Oh no, this is fed up. But this is Holy Spirit confronting. It is defragging. It is really contending for the faith, the pure faith in the office of Elijah. Book of Acts, all right? It is contending for the faith that is Jude. Jude. Hey Jude, all right? When we look down to earth at Elijah, which is out there now, many places, diverse people. People don't know it because they're not taught it. They're not aware of it, but there, it is out there, and it's it can be quiet. It can be loud, but it never controls, undermines, backbites, tail bears, and it does not have bloodthirst like these do. There, I didn't know it till today. God revealed, because I've dealt with, what is that awful residual after effect, the aftermath of coming out of those groups so they know you and they're against you. Bloodthirst. They go till they try to kill you off. It is murderous. Kill your reputation. Gossip. Wow. Mean. It is because you've tread by mistake, really at God's leading, you tread on their turf and you didn't know what you triggered till you got there. That's it. So an overview of Elijah is that he wanted the move of God to deliver the whole nation, keeping it from being destroyed, all right? Well, that's now how Elijah, the false prophet, they're blind. They're egos. They're, they're like Isaiah 5, calling good, evil, evil, good. They're against God. It really, if you read the whole first 10 chapters of, of, of Isaiah, excuse me, Isaiah, it describes this group also, this impure group also, Isaiah 1 through 1027 which is the 1027 big thing they are blocking the whole move of the nation to keep it from being destroyed and taken captive by a fierce nation which was the Assyrians back then nobody knows this stuff because you don't want to know you want to play time you want to pray and you want to be goody goody and you want to quote your word and get your stuff and you want to get a man and you need to get a man. I don't need one. I, don't, I mean, I would like one if God wants. I had a happy marriage. My parents were happy marriage. Has anybody ever had? I want to wait out till I find one that will be that contented and a one-man woman. And I'm a one-woman man or whatever the vice versa is. And I want, when that happens, I'll settle down. But I will not... I will not do it if I can't find it. I would rather be here with God in a happy, happy life. All right. So I have no 
this person is really being open, but there's no false agenda and I've never had. All I've done is follow the Lord, do what he said, and get trigger, trigger people in this one style of false teaching. Elijah versus Ahab and Jezebel. Let's talk about Jezebel. One of the things is, when you think of Jezebel, you go back to 1 Kings is the first story. The first story is that there was Omri, the king of Israel. Now, you know the kings of Israel, if they're kings in Israel or Judah, they'd have to know the law. They'd have to know around the Torah, the law, and the law says, do not practice any false religion. Do not marry outside the faith of the Hebrew faith. So Omri grew up, the king of Israel, in 1 Kings 16, and it says about Omri, he was the worst Baal worshiper that ever lived in Israel. He grew up, of course, and then he had a baby boy named King Ahab, and the Bible says after that, King Ahab was even worse. Ahab was worse, going after the false prophecy, the false idolatry, the false idol Baal. All right. Even though he did that, he was still knowledgeable, if he were king in Israel, about the law. Do not go outside the faith to marry. Do not practice Baal worship, but he did. So here's how he got, how he acquired demonic Jezebel. He went over, and he went over to King Ethbaal's family, and he said, I would like to marry your beautiful demonic daughter named Jezebel. Well, let's look at the background, the backstory of Jezebel. She had not been raised around the law. She had raised in heathen practices, satanic practices. No wonder she was filled with devils. Yet the blind, weak, cowardly Ahab didn't discern it. And he didn't really care about God's call. So he invited her to be his you know, married wife. And they were king and queen together. That's how this happened. That is how, you know... In the old lore of the LP in our nation, oh, better watch for those women. They're going to take you down. They're going to seduce you. They're going to do all. They, they're easily deceived like Eve. Oh, they're witchy. Watch out for the strong lady. Yeah, watch out. No, Ahab was too weak. Guess what? He willfully chose, just like Adam did the fruit when Eve gave it to him. Eve was deceived. Adam was not. And God went after Adam, not Eve chain of command Genesis 3 said Adam where are you not Eve where are you another day another story too long so we see that after after Ahab marries the demonic queen demonic antichrist queen they both go out and make trouble for God the whole move of God they want their turf that's why they're fighting him. Don't you dare take my turf. I'm the king. I'm the queen. You're not going to take our treasures. That's what this is about. It is about treasures and about money in this group. It is about money. Targeting people because they're scared of turf partakers or hurt their money flow. So we look at after they got married. Jezebel, Ahab were married. And when he got her home, he could have said... I divorce you. I repent. I will not keep you because I did willfully sin against my God, the Most High God, by marrying demonic Jezebel, who was not even a Jew. That did not happen. So, of course, the unholy trio of the triumvirate of demonic against God's move in his people was Ahab. Jezebel and their minions, the 850 false prophets, and that is at least how many have under, are underscoring the wealth movement, which is a lot more than 850, and they're all out there right now. Let me add, with no fear of the Lord, no consciousness of community, not at all, no consciousness, and they need to be delivered, and that's why I'm speaking so passionately so forthrightly because they're too they're dense their ears are dull and this is why we're doing it with a what is it a prophetic act so to speak being dramatic faithful are the wounds of a friend a true friend 
I tried to get it. I tried to speak to these people. I tried to show my love, to donate. I tried to serve. Oh, I didn't know you get attacked by their minions, their class conscious crew that they've raised up under them, their underlings, just for showing up in the witch watching groups, class conscious groups. I didn't know it. That's showbiz now. It is just showbiz. Here I am instead enjoying the peaceful harmony outside of all that dysfunction outside of all that dysfunction and god is able to do exceedingly above all we could ask or think outside their ranks i have a miracle working side i was just depleted from passing under the toxic dysfunction of this nation for the last 20 years in 1998 on 1996 on that was a brand new learning curve and a shock, not because I couldn't figure it all out. What in the world? Why do I trigger it? What is good old boyism? Why is this? What is well? What is not? It's East Coast shepherding. East Coast shepherding. All white males, Levitical patriarchs are over everybody else. And they're strong, appointed authoritarian matriarchs. The Levitical matriarchs are under them. Praying against and targeting also. But anyway, and see, I wasn't raised around. That's just plain old LP in our nation. Back from the old Tommy Hills, Jezebel watching, country law now made it big, need to be elite and be over all of us, which I am not there. So if I can speak to any or anybody about this to make sure you know I'm on the right, you know, the real deal, I don't have to be right. Listen, I do not have to be right. Right, self righteousness is the old move. We do not need it, will not pass in this new self righteousness is history, it needs to be. So, I will. If if you feel that this is a word of any kind of truth and you need to talk about it in a pleasant and loving, respectful fashion any day, just just correspond dfwleader at gmail.com, dfwleader at gmail.com. And if you're a top leader, of a real ministry, not playtime, not want to be, not complaining, not if you're really, you know, really a mature office minister, we will talk together. So I can give you my phone number, my Viber, my whatever we have, WhatsApp, if you need that. God is good. This is not playtime. I see that after this passage of growth. Learning about dysfunction has now behind me that I will be ready to focus on building and getting my worship back. The worship is a huge part, probably the biggest part of this ministry. I used to be a prayer protection person too, and I want to do that. Pray for people, pray for their ministries, all kinds, even well, black and white. That used to be what I did before this, but in Dallas, it was exceedingly satanic and hateful in the spirit realm. It was so bad, I lost, I couldn't focus on the music. I lost my instruments, had a violent assault in my office that smashed the keyboard. I used to record, and so it's put my, it stunted, held captive my composing, CCLI composing, ministry, and prophetic psalmist type thing. But we ask for prayer. We really need your prayer right now. We're in a new day. It's really good. It's really good. I want some. I need. I want some fun. I want some fun. I have been on the altar. I have been on the sacrificial realm throughout this. I have been on the sacrificial realm and gone down, but no fun. And I want God. You know, the right kind of people to have fun with in the right kind of way. I'm active. I'm lively. I don't think old. I think new all the time. I just don't think, you know, past. I don't think resting on past laurels or moves is good enough. I want to be myself and whatever is really going on now. But I liked, I don't want to be critical either. I'm happy. So happy not being under the dysfunctional, toxic ministries. Really am. But my need is prayer people. Prayer, I don't have a lot of prayer people because when I had to get out of the toxic, dysfunction, prophetic, I left prayer people, really good prayer people. And I need that back. One reason is I don't want to diagnose or study, exclaim, teach against the harmful doctrine knowing that they're going there. 
because I don't want to be a critic of their people. I'm not a critic of the leader, but I don't want that to get fuzzy, you know, make them feel unhappy with their people, where they are. So I, tr I pulled out and took, left every kind of prayer person. Now I called the, basically a few, I need more people. So the issue is Tavo, Pastor T, servant leader, just wants some happy fun. The right, you know, the right way and strength, prayer protection over my life over my body, my temple, my wherewithal, all these things, my wherewithal, my joy, the right, you know, the right deep people. And if there is one sent to me, the right kind of person for my life, uh, I guess what I lost with this function in this last move and not being able to really know who I can trust if they, you know, a lot of Christians, I lost, I lost a lot of my personal, uh, people to walk through life with that's really it and I'm ready for that now God is ready for it I really feel it is but it's a new day we're not sad we're just feeling better <laughs> really though better joyful better not bitter at all not sad not a bit but it was worth it this was worth it for what God wants for his kingdom that's all I can say and his kingdom has got to be diverse and he has used me to live on the low, 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 you know, scale in the last few years, last few years, to teach also and brag on God, hey, it's not about money. It's not about status. It's not about class. It's not about your car, your house, your land, your person, whether you have a person, whether you're famous or not. It's about him and his kingdom and my Jesus Christ, my Messiah, my Holy Spirit, my Father. He is not an accuser. He is not a big boss. He is not an abuser. He's not a legalist. He's a lover. He really is. He is a lover. God bless you. He loves you. This is Tevo de Yarsi. God bless you all in the name of Jesus, in the body of Christ forevermore. God bless.